someone or something is calling us from interstellar space. Could it be aliens? Or could it be something far stranger? A mysterious signal was uncovered recently that surprised researchers and no one knows what it is. But the interesting thing they found out is that we've been getting the signal for the last three decades and no one knew about it until now. So, who or what is sending that signal? And is it possible we could be contacted by an intergalactic civilization soon, as some scientists believe? And what would happen to humanity if we found out we weren't alone in the universe? Get ready to discover this and more. Since the invention of the first working radio telescope back in 1937 by American amateur astronomer Grote Reber, we've been listening for sounds coming from the cosmos in hopes of finding a radio signal that would tell us we're not alone. With this homemade telescope, Reber mapped the radio structure of the Milky Way galaxy, discovered bright sources of radio wave outside the galaxy, and made important observations that would later help physicists discover non-thermal radiation. That said, it's helpful to understand radio waves before we start talking about signals from space. Radio waves, just like light waves, are part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, which is a blistering 186,282 miles per second. You're all familiar with SETI, or the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, which has been scanning space for radio signals that might come from some kind of advanced civilization like ours. And we've actually received some mysterious radio signals. The WOW signal was a mysterious and unexplained radio signal detected from outer space on August the 15th, 1977. It's one of the most famous and puzzling radio signals ever received by SETI. The signal was detected by the Big Ear Radio Telescope at Ohio State University's Perkins Observatory, which was used for SETI research at the time. The signal was discovered by Dr. Jerry R. Emmon, an astronomer working on the SETI project at the time. While analyzing data from the Big Ear Telescope, he came across a remarkably strong and narrowband signal that lasted for exactly 72 seconds. The signal was so unusual that Emin circled the data on the computer printout and wrote WOW in red ink, giving the signal its famous name. So why did Emin call this the WOW signal? The reason was because the signal was received at a frequency of 1420.4 MHz, which is within the hydrogen line, a frequency that many scientists consider a potential channel for communication by extraterrestrial civilizations. The hydrogen line in radio astronomy is a special wavelength of radio waves that comes from hydrogen gas in space. When hydrogen atoms in space give off energy, they emit radio waves at a very specific frequency. This frequency is like a unique fingerprint for hydrogen, and it's around 1420 megahertz. For 40 years, the narrowband radio signal stumped astronomers, but in 2017, a professor, Antonio Paris of St. Petersburg College, claimed that the signal was created by a pair of comets named 266P Christensen and 335P Gibbs. Both of these comets have clouds of hydrogen gas millions of miles surrounding them. However, some astronomers, including Emin, believe that Paris is wrong about the comet explanation. The reason is that the signal did not repeat, and that it appeared for only a short time. The Big Ear Telescope had two feed horns, which both provide a different field of view for the radio telescope. That said, if it was a comet, Emin would have seen the source come through twice, each lasting 72 seconds within a minute and a half, and that didn't happen. It should be noted that Emin isn't convinced it's aliens either. The WOW signal is still the strongest signal that we've ever received, and we may not even know who or what gave off the signal. It's intriguing, but it's not the only strange and bizarre signal from space. There's a signal coming right from the center of the Milky Way galaxy that's got astronomers stumped.
A research team was going through data from Australia's ASKAP radio telescope in 2020. Two million objects were found to be sending out signals, and the researchers were classifying each one. The computer was able to identify most of the objects as stars, and even picked out the telltale signs of a rapidly rotating dead star called a pulsar. However, one object in the center of the Milky Way stumped not only the researchers, but the computer as well couldn't figure it out either. This unknown object emitted powerful radio waves in 2020, sending out six signals in nine months. The irregular pattern and polarized radio emissions weren't like anything researchers have seen before. But stranger than the irregular patterns was the fact that the object could not be seen in X-ray visible or infrared light. And to top it all off, the radio signal mysteriously disappeared despite listening for months with two different radio telescopes. But that's not all. A year later, the strange radio signal reappeared after it was detected, and within a day, it vanished again. One thing is certain, this is no ordinary dead star, or like any other of the two million objects in the research team survey. So what could it be? Researchers believe this rare discovery could belong to a category of signals coming from the Milky Way known as Galactic Center Radio Transients, or GCRTs. Only three other objects are in this category. It took 10 years to find them, and scientists are still trying to figure out what they are. But before we jump to conclusions about the signals possibly coming from aliens, it's important to remember that technological signals would cover a much narrower range of frequencies, like our broadcast radios do. It's quite possible that the GCRTs are neutron stars, pulsars that are orbiting each other so that a radio signal from one star eclipses another, or it simply could be dying pulsars running out of energy while emitting irregular radio gasps. A new telescope named the Square Kilometre Array might be able to figure out this mystery. The array is being built in Australia and South Africa and should be completed in 2028. We may think we haven't heard anything yet, that there is no concrete evidence of a signal from an advanced civilization, but it doesn't mean we're not getting any signals from space. In fact, we might just be listening to a signal from an advanced civilization right now. Scientists have recently discovered an object that's been sending radio signals towards Earth since at least 1988, but we didn't know about it until now. For the last 35 years, strange blasts of energy from an object 15,000 light years away have been hitting the Earth in varying levels of brightness and have occurred like clockwork approximately every 20 minutes and sometimes lasting for five minutes. Scientists originally thought the strange radio signals could be coming from a magnetar. Magnetars have exceptionally strong magnetic fields. In fact, they possess the most powerful magnetic fields known in the universe, often measured at a trillion times stronger than the Earth's field. To put that into perspective, a magnetar located halfway to the moon could strip the information from a credit card here on Earth. Due to the intense magnetic fields, the crust of a magnetar can crack, producing what are known as star quakes. These events release a tremendous amount of energy, sometimes producing powerful bursts of X-rays and gamma rays that we can detect from Earth. So could it be a signal from an alien civilization trying to reach us? It can be tempting to include extraterrestrial intelligence as a possible source for the signal. In fact, that's what happened when the first pulsar was discovered and astrophysicists nicknamed it LGM-1 for Little Green Men 1 before additional observations caused them to rule out the possibility. The most likely culprit, researchers say, is pulsars or neutron stars that blink and rotate like lighthouses, emitting energetic beams as they rotate towards and away from Earth. But pulsars slow down as time passes their pulses growing fainter with age until they eventually stop producing radio signals completely. What's more confusing about the object the researchers detected is that it resembles a pulsar but spins 1,000 times slower. With that information, it rules out the pulsar explanation. Another explanation researchers offer is that the object could be an ultra-long period magnetar, 
a rare type of neutron star with extremely strong magnetic fields that can produce powerful bursts of energy. But until recently, all known magnetars released energy at intervals ranging from a few seconds to a few minutes. That's far more often than the 22-minute intervals that this object emits radio waves. Until technology improves, we won't know for sure what the signal is. With that in mind, could it be possible that we might get a radio signal from a distant civilization? It's theoretically possible for us to receive a radio signal from a distant civilization. But there are several factors we need to take into consideration if we ever hope to find something. The first thing we need to keep in mind is the frequency range. If an extraterrestrial civilization sends out a signal, we have to be listening in the right frequency range to detect it. There are certain waterhole frequencies, as they are called, which are between 1420 and 1662 megahertz. But the problem with listening on these frequencies is that there's no guarantee other civilizations would choose to broadcast on these bands. Another important thing is signal strength. For a signal to be detectable over interstellar distances, it would either need to be incredibly powerful or targeted directly at our solar system. Broad-beamed transmissions diminish in strength according to the inverse square law, meaning they become weaker very quickly over vast distances. For instance, if we put a smartphone on the moon, it would end up being one of the brightest radio sources in the sky. Timing is also very important. Space is vast, and the time scales involved are immense. For a civilization to contact us, they would need to be transmitting their signal at a time when we are technologically capable of receiving it. If they transmitted it too early or too late relative to our development, we might miss it. And speaking of time scales, radio transmissions from Earth haven't made it very far out into space. Some popular science fiction films with ideas about aliens attacking Earth thanks to sending out noisy signals in space are somewhat far-fetched. This galactic map shows just how far radio signals have traveled from Earth. That tiny blue dot you can barely see is 200 light years in diameter. That's not saying that those radio signals won't ever reach some civilization out there. It's quite possible. However, we again run into the problem of timing and timescales. Because of the finite speed of light, when you look up into the night sky at the stars, you're looking into the past. Take, for instance, the bright star Sirius. It's 8.6 light years away from us. If you were looking at it right now, the light hitting your eye had traveled 8.6 years. Looking farther away at more distant objects, that effect becomes larger. Everyone has probably looked up into the sky and seen the Big Dipper. When you gaze upon Dube, the foremost star in the bowl of the Dipper, you're actually observing light that predates your own birth. And let's say that an extraterrestrial civilization 65 million light years away from us could see the Earth. They would be seeing planet Earth during a time of the dinosaurs. That said, a faraway civilization would hear nothing. At the same time, if an alien civilization did hear radio signals coming from our planet, we might be long gone before anyone had a chance to make it here. This is unless an extraterrestrial civilization was able to bend space and time at will using wormholes. That said, there's no way to be certain why or how an extraterrestrial civilization might choose to communicate. They could use methods or technologies beyond our current understanding. They could also have motivations for staying silent. Projects like the Breakthrough Listen Initiative are currently scanning the skies with unprecedented sensitivity looking for any signs of extraterrestrial broadcasts. According to a new study that was recently done, some of the strongest radio signals that were sent out may have reached far-off stars by now. And apparently, if those stars happen to be home to extraterrestrial life that could respond to our signals, some astronomers believe we could be hearing back from them as early as 2029. When you think about all the ways you could make contact with another planet far, far away, Radio signals might not be the best thing for an intelligent civilization to send out. Because you wouldn't know who you were sending this signal out to. And an extraterrestrial civilization would probably only do this as a distress call or maybe even as a warning. An intelligent civilization looking for life somewhere else in the universe might not go about announcing their presence at all. 
While it's speculative to assume how extraterrestrial civilizations might attempt to contact Earth, since we have no direct evidence of such civilizations, there are several methods scientists believe might be plausible based on our current understanding of science and technology. If we exclude radio waves, several other potential methods emerge by which an interstellar civilization might attempt to contact us, based on a combination of current scientific understanding and speculative concepts. Optical signals. Lasers or other powerful sources of light can send focused and coherent optical signals across interstellar distances. Such a beam, especially if it were pulsed in a specific pattern, could indicate intentional communication. However, laser light still cannot break the speed limit of light. Physical probes. Sending automated spacecraft or probes to other star systems is a concept we've already started to explore with the Voyager 1 and 2 probes. An advanced civilization might deploy probes designed to establish contact or relay information. And lately, we've seen a lot on the news about strange objects discovered by fighter pilots that have no explanation. Neutrino communication. Given that neutrinos pass through most matter without interaction, they could theoretically be used to send messages across vast distances, though the technology required to modulate and detect neutrino signals would be quite advanced. Gravitational waves. With our newfound ability to detect gravitational waves, it's conceivable that a highly advanced civilization might use them for communication. They would need the capability to produce controlled events that generate detectable gravitational waves. Encoded in DNA or microbes. While certainly more abstract, it's conceivable that a message or signature could be encoded into DNA either within specially engineered organisms or possibly within organisms already present on a planet. Stellar manipulation. Modifying the output or appearance of their own star by causing intentional dimming or brightening in a manner detectable by other civilizations could be a way to send a beacon of their presence. We talked a lot about strange signals coming from stars. It certainly could be one way to communicate. Megastructures. Building large structures that have detectable effects on their local environment, like Dyson spheres, could serve both a functional purpose for the civilization and act as a beacon to others. There's speculation around concepts like quantum entanglement for faster-than-light communication, though current understanding suggests it's not possible. And there are the consequences of meeting an extraterrestrial race. What would happen to humanity? Would we change? Would we care? It goes without saying that contact with extraterrestrial beings would be one of the most significant events in human history, and it would have profound and far-reaching implications for our planet and our civilization. While it's impossible to predict all the consequences with some certainty, there are some potential outcomes that could occur if contact with aliens was made. The knowledge that we're not alone in the universe could promote a sense of global unity. The shared realization of our common humanity might lead to greater cooperation among nations and reduced conflicts. We might not know if the aliens we just made contact with would open a wormhole and suddenly appear on our cosmic doorstep. Earth might need to enhance its defenses and security measures in case of hostile or unintended interactions with advanced alien civilizations. Depending on the interactions and capabilities of the alien civilization, contact could pose an existential threat to humanity just like you've seen in those alien invasion movies. Potential alien disease and their impact on Earth's ecosystems and human health would need to be addressed. Don't forget that in War of the Worlds, a tiny bacteria wiped out the invaders. The same could happen to us with contact. It's an interesting thing to consider, but contact with aliens may also challenge traditional religious and philosophical beliefs. Some religious doctrines might need to be reinterpreted or adapted to incorporate the existence of extraterrestrial life. Religion might just be erased from existence entirely. However, on the other hand, contact with aliens could benefit the human race, assuming the alien civilization would be willing to share their technology. 
the exchange of knowledge and technology between Earth and alien civilizations could lead to rapid advancements in science and technology. We might gain access to new energy sources, medical breakthroughs, and a deeper understanding of the universe. That said, we want to ask our viewers, what do you think? Do you think we'll ever get a signal from an advanced civilization? And if we did, would they wipe us out? Or would we find a way to finally live in peace? Make sure to sound off in the comments. We read them and like to hear what you've got to say. That's all the time we have for now. Make sure to stay tuned here for more exciting discoveries on our planet and the universe. And thanks for watching.